Hi guys, I'm so excited to have Bramty here. Thank you, thank you. I'm very honored. You guys didn't know Bramty's birthday just passed. So yes, happy. I turned 21. Thank. No, yeah. <laughs> I, turned, I was about to be like, um, <laughs> no, I turned 28. I can't um, believe you're 28. I know it's scary. You, you look so young. So thank you. She's 28 with three kids. If you didn't know that, if you're new on here, that's I know. insane. It's it's scary because I'm getting closer to 30, and it's scary. You know why they call it your dirty 30s? Why? So basically, women when they hit their thirties, their body releases a lot of more hormones, and you and have like the best sex of your life. Yeah, you get hornier when you hit your thirties. That's why they call it your dirty thirties. It's your body pushing you to have more kids, but I don't think you. Oh no, 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 no! Lewis no. got a vasectomy, so I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> oh, okay. If you guys didn't know, also, um, Bramty has been married for over ten years. Uh, yeah, yeah, Mar- yeah. No, oh, wait, married, been like, together, been together like eleven years, and we're about to be ten years married like next year. Dude, that sounds insane to me. So, because I feel like you are very open with, you know, your family and everything that goes on in your life, I do kind of want to just start off by asking you, how have you kept your relationship so, what did you say, stable? Stable? Yeah, I think that'd be a good word. Yeah. Like, how do I keep my relationship stable, Alive. especially in this industry? In the industry, being a mom, being a content creator, dude, seeing Bramty behind the scenes of how much mm-hmm. goes on, like, I don't know how she wakes up, gets the kids ready, goes to school, and she is so active on all social media platforms. Aww. I literally wake up at, like, 9, 10, and I'm like, <laughs> fuck, like, I don't have time or energy, so. I know, I think when you have kids, and it's not just you that you're working for, but for your family and your kids, like, you're, the grind is just, like, harder, because if you don't work, like, you don't get paid. You know? Yeah, that is true. Yeah. But I feel like people also wonder how we, we live such different lives. But we do. And when I'm, <laughs> whenever I'm with Daisy, whenever I'm with you, my life is just so different. It's like, so or different. like those first I love couple it. days. Yeah. Um, uh, Bramty actually flew out here. I did. To be in LA. So Bramty and Daisy take LA. I'm very excited. I know. Um, so I do want to say thank you for coming of here. Thank you for having me. And I did get her a gift <gasps> for her birthday. Where is that? Oh my god. Wait, close your eyes. Okay, okay, okay. Close your eyes. This is my happy birthday and daddy, thank you. And I'm very surprised because I was not expecting this at all. Okay, you can open it. And up. I can't are you I'm nervous. Wait. Open. Okay, okay. Stop, Daisy. <laughs> what, what did you think? You were <laughs> you were so scared. I was, because you're what Daisy, is, girl. I, I don't know what to expect with you half she, the time. Wait, wait can I open yeah, it right yeah, now? Open it, open it. Okay, you didn't have to do this. I don't know. Thank I don't you. know why my heart's beating fast. You know what oh. I, I've noticed? One of my love languages is gift giving. You, no, it is. It I is. I, I don't I've know noticed why, that from you for sure. Oh my god! Thank you. I'm gonna put this of mic course. down for a second. Okay. Actually. Thank you. Thank you. A little ASMR moment. <laughs> no, but for real, thank you, baby. You didn't have to do this. No, of course. It's what friends do. So this is actually my favorite, 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 perfume. favorite perfume ever. I get the most compliments when I hop in the Uber. All the Uber drivers love this perfume. I got put on by another friend, so I was like, let me. Thank I feel you. like perfume is like. Yeah, Daisy's not gatekeeping her set over here. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> She's sharing her set. Thank you. Okay. It smells so good. I need to get you your know, I, I have one other, not this one. I have one other. So this is my second one to the collection. Yeah. And I'm excited to see what this smells like. This one is by far... You might as well. A ver, dame poquito. This does smell like you. Oh, sorry. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Daisy, for It all. smells so. I want to hug you. Wait. Thank you. You guys, also, Brown Tea is like, would you say you're affectionate with your friends? I feel no. like, yeah, no. She's that not. hug cost me a lot. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> that was the one hug for the year. Okay, yeah. Um, no, Daisy's very affectionate, and I'm like the opposite. And sometimes when we're together, she's like, can you just hug me? And I was like, okay, sure. <laughs> But I think I love when my friends are not affectionate and then I make them affectionate. It makes them a little uncomfortable, oh. but... But thank you for this, for I was not expecting this. I thank know you, you for are. thinking of me. Thank you for doing this. You're mm. honestly the best. And if only if you guys could really get to know, like, the real Daisy. Because you, like, show, like, a certain you on social media. Yeah. But, like, deep down, like, Daisy's the sweetest. Like, you're literally I, I, one of the sweetest and you're very nurturing. And you're very caring and very affectionate. Extremely mm. affectionate. In thank a good you. Way. I'll take thank that. you for my gift. Of course, of course. So now that we have, what did you do for your birthday? Um, I didn't really do much because my birth, my birthday present was uh, the trip to Chile that I oh, went. Yeah, on. you did. You went there after how many years? Um, I was born there and then I never went back. 
so we went i went to chile for like a week and i got to really learn like more about myself mm -hmm. like my culture because chile is from my dad's side mm -hmm. and since my mom and dad are not together mm -hmm. i didn't really know that about like much about myself mm -hmm. so i went to learn about myself so on my actual birthday it was very simple we just went to like this arcade place ate dinner nothing crazy mm -hmm. i think i think the older you get like the less you want to do i don't know if you feel the, the le same way. less is more yeah yeah i realized i used to always do like big extravagant birthday shoots and then ah, this year i didn't do one not even the last year i feel like ever since i gotten older i'm just like mm, like I just want a birthday cake and a nice dinner with my yeah. intimate friends. Like, I don't really care to go all out and make it a big deal. But I agree yeah. that, like, the older I get, I enjoy the simpler. And the older you get, you realize, like, I'm healthy, I'm blessed. Like, I yeah, have yeah, a good yeah. job. And, like, you, that's your gift to you. Yeah, I feel like um, with age comes more gratitude. And as long as, like, mm -hmm. I don't know, I just feel like I used to care about superficial shit a lot. And now I just really don't as long as, like, I'm surrounded by genuine people. Yeah. I remember I was, like gonna throw this huge birthday party one in texas and one in la to cater to like Damn. my family here and then my family were there and i'm like oh my god what is this person and i was like why am i catering to everybody oh, yes you know what i have noticed uh -huh. i used to be such a people pleaser. pleaser yeah i've gotten but i don't know if it's like a libra thing i think it is a libra thing i'm not sure or it's a daisy thing i don't Maybe know a daisy thing. <laughs> no but, but i feel you yeah i used to always um just think about what everybody else would want and never really what i what would want because birthday parties at the end is more for like everybody because you're the one spending the money yeah and i feel that way because when i throw my kids birthday parties what during the party i'm just hosting and walking back and forth and making sure everyone's okay and i'm like i don't even get to enjoy, enjoy it, it with your kids yeah. right yeah so <clears throat> so this time we're just like i asked my kids like do you want a birthday party or trip and everyone's like a trip and, and I think you, those are like the moments. I think I don't know. I like trips more. Now. I and you have been traveling. I've been more. traveling. You've a lot, been traveling yeah. so much, and you also went to Puerto Rico. Uh -huh. We love Puerto Rico. We do. I love we Puerto do. Rico and all the men there are so fine. <laughs> the, so so <laughs> the men. The men. I remember one time you called me. You're like, I'm going. I'm like, for what? <laughs> You know what? I tell Ramsey everything. Like we were. On she the calls me so randomly, and you'll tell me these random things. <laughs> <laughs> I do tell you most, and I I really want to touch on this. Like, uh -huh. so our friendship. It's like Bramchi and I can go months. Oh yeah, a long time without talking. But every time mm -hmm. we're together, it's like no time Nothing. has passed exactly. by. Exactly, and those and are like the best type of friendships. They are the best type of friendships because you don't hold grudges or you don't get offended or take or anything salty. personal. We were talking about this a little bit. How like. Um, I was telling her that back then I would take it very personal if like I would reach out to someone and they wouldn't mm -hmm. reach out back or they would take days to reply or I'd be like, oh, they're not, you know, they don't care about me or whatever. And I feel like what I realized is that I used to lack a lot back then. And so I would expect other people to fill that cup for me. Mm -hmm. But now, you know, throughout the years of, you know, getting to heal myself and love myself, I don't take it personal anymore. So mm -hmm. um, I was telling them that. Bramty is someone who I analyze Bramty to the T. <laughs> I did. I was like, um, Bramty is, is like the type of person. She is a very genuine, caring person. So it kind of rose me the wrong way when people are like, she can't yeah, keep friends. She I can't know. be blind. I'm That's like, a huge thing. That I can't keep friends. It's a huge thing. And I'm like, yeah. no, I'm like, I wish people would actually like sit down and realize that like Bramty got pregnant and married at a very young age it's mm -hmm. her bubble and that's all she's known like she didn't get to have the like crazy teenager experience of exactly. like going out and going clubbing and getting to know what she likes what kind of liquor she likes or, like know, stuff girl. like that she didn't <laughs> uh -huh. have that so like Bramty's like very present in, like what's in front of her what she pays attention to exactly so you know I know if I hit her up randomly she'll like be like hey yeah. I'm busy or like hey I'll call you be back exactly and like she'll make time to pay attention to me or like talk to me or whatever and I really appreciate that I feel like people mm -hmm don't know that but like she's not gonna go out of her way and like reach because it's not where her mind is like she's mm -hmm. just focused on her family and and that's what comes first to Aww. her and i completely understand that so. thank you well thank you for saying that because i know that is a huge thing with me that yeah. like i can't keep friends but you said it perfectly like we have our own lives yeah and exactly. the good thing is that like i realized this like a couple years ago because the older you get the more you start realizing mm -hmm. exactly what you said like you used to think this about other people mm -hmm. but you know um and it's good though that because you're younger than me mm -hmm. and it's good that like the older you are the older you're getting the more mature you are becoming mm -hmm. if you were going backwards like more immature that would be an issue that would be huge but issue. i feel like from the first time i met you like years ago compared to now you're just more <gasps> mature <laughs> you're very mature like you see things differently and that's like the best way to be yeah i feel like i i have came a very long way very 
<laughs> she's from like the first tell time you. I met you until now a very long time. Yeah. Um the first time we met was in Miami. Yeah. Like and it was like a five years ago? No. Four years ago. It was four years ago. I was in a relationship, I think. I don't remember. I think we met in twenty nineteen. Yeah. So like, yeah, twenty nineteen. Like four years ago. <clears throat> Yeah, 2019, yeah. yeah. Um, we met, and yeah. I don't think we, like, we didn't, like, gravitate and click immediately. I think it took us, no. like, I think the second trip or maybe, like, the, the third trip. trip. I think the second trip, we finally, like, clicked. And yeah. then the third trip, we were, like, we got along really good. Yeah, and um, I just remember Brown Tea is just, like, as you guys know on the internet, she's she's bold and she's in your face, and she's unapologi- unapologetically <laughs> herself, and she is very blunt, just mm-hmm. like me. I just feel like I don't show that on social media but i am Uh very like in your face as well like very bold and blunt and i was just like i really like her i was like i'm gonna make her like me back (laughs) (laughs) because i feel like it takes some time for her to warm up to you 100 percent. yeah i barely hug you i mean like when you you first met when you first meet me like anybody and i think that's like a gemini thing because we have like two sides to our personalities Mm -hmm. it's like the really closed off like serious yeah you're you're very like Yes, or you're going to get the, like, I'm very open and very crazy, but it does take mm-hmm. me a while, so that's why we didn't yeah. really click the first time. In the time. beginning, yeah. But then after, and then ever since, like, we can go months without talking, and then we'll just be, like, back to normal. And I love about that that about us. Thank you, um, thank you. I, I do, do want to talk about our Miami trip. Our last Miami trip, which was, like, three months ago, four months ago? I think it was, like, three months ago. It was around, it was in March. I yeah. remember it was in March. And this was our first solo trip that we I, did without yeah. nobody else. So it was just, like, you and I. And, and we, we like hadn't really got seen to each other in years. We haven't, but you just called me up one day. Or how did, how did that come about? I, I texted you because, um, so we went with Kathleen. Um, oh, and yes, she's yes, yes. amazing. Love her so much. Um, she was hosting this trip, and she was like, if you have anybody in mind that you would love to bring onto this trip, like, mm-hmm. let me know. And the first person that popped into mind was Bram T, and I literally hit her up, and I was like, hey, like, are you down to go yeah. to Miami with me? And she lives in Florida, so I was like, it'll be a quick, easy trip. Yeah. Um, and she's like, yeah, I'm down. I yeah, was honestly so nervous because we hadn't seen each other since Louis birthday, birthday party, which was three thing. years ago yeah, yeah so i was just like fuck like how is this gonna be but as soon as we saw each other it was like no yeah it was like nothing ever happened yeah and it was so much fun yeah and thank you for inviting me because i feel like as a mom <laughs> like you need time to like get away and like do your own thing every once in a while and yeah. like how can i say no to you like you're always so Dude, fun <laughs> i was like oh she is about to get oh my god like daisy put me through things <laughs> like i got to experience daisy's life in miami for like a couple of nights and i literally could not even hang like, she the- the, I, the last night you, d- you I couldn't, couldn't make it yeah and you were like come on we're, we're going and like it's time to party and i was like no i want to sleep <laughs> yeah it's because miami's different like the dinner start at like 12 we started dinner at 12 yeah and then the club is not until two and then they don't close till four and then you I'm go just to the strip club life but it's yeah. fun like getting but, out of your ordinary day-to-day life but that miami trip i i definitely think that we got closer yeah we because did. it was just us two but we also got to get like deep into yeah, conversations. we did. We did. And then we also filmed some content. I don't know if you guys saw it, but Bram T's whole eyelash. Oh, she glued yes. her eyelash oh to God. her eyelid. She accidentally put... Yeah. Dude, and that was the day after we went out. So I don't think people know this, but like I was dead asleep because we got home at like... Barely. By the time we took off our makeup and everything, we probably went to sleep at like five. Yeah. I made a whole TikTok about like our whole day, whatever. But mm-hmm. um, she just woke up so early. I remember I just I'm hear just like her. early right I know you are. And I just remember hearing her like moving and stuff I was like cleaning that. the room up. Oh, yeah, you doing. were. Yeah. And then I And just, then I mistaked. Like I just, um, you bought nail glue. Super glue. <laughs> you had bought nail super glue. The and I had bought. drying one. And I had bought eye drops. <laughs> and while I'm cleaning, like without me, I'm cleaning. And as soon as I grab like the bottles daisy just happens to wake up at that second and since you woke up i was like you fucking scared me because you woke up like the exorcist like you were just <laughs> you were just laying down and your arms are crossed like, and you're just mm. like <laughs> and i was like what the hell and then during because you had just woken up so like i grabbed the wrong one and i was walking and i just go to pour it in my eye and it's the freaking super glue mm. and it and thank god because like i was in the middle of talking to you, if you and i told you this i was like if you did not wake up I would have been so focused and I would have put it directly in my eye. Oh, dude, but she woke so up perfect bad. timing. So I was just like walking and I just put it in and I missed and I got my bottom lash. But it just closed shut. And I remember you were freaking out. Dude, like you I, were on the verge of tears for me. I was just like, I was hungover and I just saw her eyes shut and she's like, and it was all white. Like it dried so fast. Mm-hmm. But um, 
we had a boat party, a yacht party, and honestly, I was kind of glad that, not glad that it happened to you, but I was glad that we weren't going to the yacht because I was extremely hungover and I honestly didn't want to move. Yeah. But her eye, she ended up going to the doctor and then, yeah. Um, yeah, oh, she cut good. it open with scissors. That was probably yeah. the most terrifying. But like three months later, my lashes are back to normal. Yeah, I was looking at her right now and I'm like, well, she has eyelash extensions. I do, but, <laughs> but the eyelash extensions are holding on to something. So, you know. At least something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But they're yeah. good. They're, so we're, we've gone through things, you know. Yeah, like, so that trip was like crazy spontaneous fun mm -hmm. another thing that i do want to talk about is that in miami i did get super vulnerable with bram t mm -hmm. and i opened up about something that has been following me around for years and i have been wanting to talk about this for a very long time and i just didn't feel like the time was right until now okay and um i i did tell you a little bit about the story I didn't go much into it and you can give me your honest feedback and you can butt okay. in and kind of just okay so yeah. I, I i get an idea of what you're going to talk about so yeah. i will ask you questions kind of like you can what the viewers wants to know yeah you can be completely just blunt okay. with me um no um no sides no sides just you know just and i'm going to ask you questions like genuine questions yeah to really genuine, like dig, dig deep yeah in your thought process i'll be completely honest um okay. I'm going to be completely vulnerable and honest right now. So we're going to start off from the very beginning. So this took place in 2018. And a lot of people actually, this was kind of like, it was, it kind of died down and then it got brought back up recently. And like it, people just think that like, oh, this, this scandal happened this year or that year. And this actually all started in 2018. So in 2018, I got a BBL. Wait, is this your first time admitting it? Yes. It's my first time addressing it. I never denied it. I just never addressed it. So you never said you did it and you never said you did. Yeah. But you're literally saying on here like. Yes. You... I got a BBL in 2018. Okay. And this is exactly how everything went down. So I got the surgery and obviously like for the people that have gotten surgery, they ask you questions beforehand, like about your health and stuff. And mm -hmm. I remember them asking, you know, are you anemic? And I said, yes, I have always been anemic. My entire life growing up, I had always tried to donate blood, like in the blood drives. And every time they would tell me like, no, you're not a candidate. They would even give you like the little brochures. They would have like frijoles and stuff like that, like foods to eat. <laughs> and that's iron. true. That's very yeah, true. And so they won't take your blood if yeah, your you, iron is Yeah. Low. And so I just remember being like, oh my God, like this is so annoying. Like I've always wanted to, you know, help out, whatever. So <clears throat> I remember they asked me if you're anemic and I was like, yes. And they're like, okay, usually with patients who are anemic, you know, we'll keep you, we'll monitor you afterwards just to make sure because some patients lose a lot of blood some don't okay. like blah blah just to make sure that you're just good. like safety procedures yeah. before the surgery and so i was like yeah yeah whatever when i tell you i did not think about how difficult the aftermath was going to be i went into it so naively like just thinking like oh it's like whatever surgery. you're gonna come out with like it was my first surgery ever by the way oh, it shit. was my first surgery ever and I was so young and I was just so naive that I didn't even think about the aftermath. And by the aftermath, I mean like you you can't even sit on your butt. You can't get up. You're laying on your stomach, like all these things. And at the time, when I'm at the beginning of my career, I'm posting twice on my makeup channel. And then I'm, I had a vlog channel as well. I was posting like vlogs on there. And I was just like super, so super, super. So you had super, no idea at all? No. Usually I, people, before they get surgery, they pre-film a exactly. bunch. Exactly. So I didn't, I didn't think about that. make it seem like they're not recovering from Girl, anything. I did not think about that. I didn't think about it. I literally just went in, got the surgery. And I remember getting out the surgery and it literally felt like I got ran over by a trailer. I don't know how to explain to you the pain and it didn't hit me until the third day finally when the third by the third days when i started to feel normal like not on like heavy drugs and this is where this idea or light bulb popped up in my head so right after i got out of surgery um the nurse i remember waking up and this nurse came and she's like hi honey like you know we're just monitoring you like you did lose a lot of blood like we just want to make sure that you're good like um that you know you won't have to like just to make sure you're good right yeah, and yeah. i remember she was like trying to like wake me up and keep me in conversation just to like make sure i'm good and She's just like talking to me and she's like, so how long have you been anemic for? And I was like, oh, like since I can remember. And she's like, oh, she's like, you probably have sickle cell. And she just said it just like that? Dude, that is the first time 
ever, ever in my entire life that I had uh -huh. ever even heard that word, right? And okay. I just remember she said that, and I was like, yeah, yeah, like, whatever. I didn't even pay much attention to it. I just remember she said that. And yeah, whatever. And then, like, the third day is, like, when I was finally coming back to life, and it, and I remember looking at my DMs and, like, messaging people being like, oh, like, where are you? Where have you been? Like, I hadn't posted on social media for those three days, and, and then I go into full panic mode. I'm like, okay. holy fuck. Mm-hmm. I cannot even get up or sit down to use the restroom. I can't like do anything. And then I start freaking out. I'm like, oh my God, like, what am I going to tell my fans? Like, like, I had no content brief film. Like I go into full panic mode. And I remember at the time it was just my mom and my ex there with me and they didn't know what to do. And I was just kind of like in a frenzy and I'm like, oh, I'm just going to say that I had sickle cell because. But let me ask you a question. So when the nurse told you like, oh, you probably have sickle cell, like mm -hmm. how, how was her expression telling you was she like worried was it just no, like oh it was you just, have sickle cell like no she was like oh you probably have sickle cell like just like she, bluntly, she just like said that? it like just so like like, like nonchalantly nothing. okay so whenever i thought like oh i just have sickle cell i you know when you like go like when you have symptoms and you go on google and you like self-diagnose like, you yourself first thing, yeah. okay so i my dumbass, my stupid dumbass, really thought that like it was like a cold and you get like a flu okay that's what i thought okay because so, i'm sure i mean I'm being very unbiased here, but if a nurse, right, yeah. like a nurse, you have to have licenses. If somebody's telling me casually, like, oh, you have sickle cell, I'm, it's going to be like, oh, I probably have a cold. I probably have like yeah, a fever. Yeah, so that's why I just took it with a grain of salt. And okay. I didn't really think about it. And I was just kind of like, I'm going to be so honest. Like, I, I fucked up and I just didn't think about it. I just was kind of, okay, so at the time as well, like... <clears throat> I was getting a lot of hate. Like, it was in the in an era where, like, you could say anything trendy or, like, you could say, tweet anything about me and it would get so much likes and attention. And I was talking about this with my friends, too. Like, back then, the internet was so, so cruel to me and I just don't know what... It was almost like a trend to hate on me and just... So you were already getting hate back then aside oh, I, from... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I was getting a lot of hate and, like, mentally, I was super weak. I was super weak. Everybody around me knew that like any little hate or any little comment would get to me and I would cry and I would just like mentally I was just super, super vulnerable. So mm -hmm. I knew that if I told the internet in 2018 when BBLs were not even a thing, oh, yeah. if I were to come out right now that I had BBL, it, nobody it, would give a shit. Oh well, yeah, right now everybody would Nobody would you. give a fuck. But in 2018, I, everything's fresh. If I were to come out with the, that I got a BBL and that's my first surgery, I would have gotten dragged through the mud. Oh yeah. And mentally, I just was not prepared for that. I was not ready for that. I knew that like... You were scared because you were I was already getting terrified. Hate. I was terrified of the internet. I was terrified of like explaining myself. I was terrified. I was honestly and genuinely just a terrified person that is why i lied i lied because i was scared and i fucked up so i sat down and i made a youtube video and i lied and i said that i had sickle so and that's why i was gone off the internet when honestly i could have just been like hey guys i wasn't feeling good you know um i was off the internet and that's it but back then like i said i was such a people pleaser and i yeah. felt the need to explain absolutely everything in my life yeah that i felt the need to just sit down and make a whole video about it mm -hmm. i really like could have gone off the internet and not even said a word but no, i made yeah. that video and once i posted it and i read the comments i realized that i fucked up really bad and but you did you did realize that though. i realized like that right away it's not right away like years later like no, no, right no, no, away no. you realized right away i realized and i was like fuck 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 i was like what did i do what did i do and i remember being like if i delete the video right away like it's gonna seem so suspicious so i was like fuck like I once again I fucked up and then I was like I'm gonna keep it up for a little bit and then I'm gonna delete it and I deleted it right away which is like why it's not even on the internet because I realized and then I deleted it and whatever and then I don't remember how much time went by like months went by and no and everybody forgot about it everybody forgot about it I was like okay like you know like I in the back of mind I'm like okay like I got away with that lie but then I felt guilty and I was like fuck like I feel bad for like you know that I lied to my fans and to the fans and to the people that actually watched that video and believe my lie, I am genuinely, genuinely sorry, sorry from the bottom of my heart. Um, you know, I wish I could take it back, but also like that mistake really has changed me and for the better. Mm -hmm. I have learned so much and I've grown from that mistake and it took me a long time to apologize to myself, especially um for even like I look back at that version of me and I feel bad for her because she was just so broken and just you know like scared and insecure and now if I were to come out with the surgery I don't care to come out and talk about it I'm after that that really taught me to just not lie 
like it's just so much easier to not lie that's why after that i made myself a promise to just not lie be open and honest about everything that's why i came out and i talked about my breast augmentation my chin lipo just like it's just better to be honest and yeah. I really did learn my lesson and I'm not mad that it came out because I did want to hold myself accountable and I am glad that I'm addressing it now at mm -hmm. this version and at this time of my life and whew, I, I, that took a lot I bet that took a lot do you feel better I like feel how do you feel so much better at first I was shaking but I feel so at peace that's good I feel at peace because I like I said I've been wanting to address this for such a long time but I'm glad that the people around didn't let me address it at the time because I can say that I am the best version of myself. I'm not perfect, but I have mm -hmm. grown and I've matured and I have healed a lot. So I feel like I handled this perfectly. And, yeah. you know, I hope that whoever's watching this is able to just genuinely see where I'm coming from. And like I said, I'm genuinely sorry to those who watched that video and believed it. And yeah, all I can do now is just move on and i'm so glad that i'm finally able to just close that chapter in my life and yeah. be unapologetically myself so i was listening to you talk right yeah. and when i hear people's stories i like putting myself in their shoes mm -hmm. just to see like what would i have done mm -hmm. and you said that like back then when you got a lot of hate you weren't as mentally strong as you are now mm -hmm. and i can agree to that 100 percent. so hearing it from someone you know hear hearing it from me besides daisy it's true like when you first start social media hate that you get yeah. brings you down like it, you are not it, it takes years to grow this tough to grow, skin yes it does so like nobody prepares you for that it's no like it's the bad hate. yeah i remember i would get hate and it would just i would be like depressed for so i agree yeah, with that yeah. so i get it and mm -hmm. then also people weren't people weren't open with their surgeries back in the day yeah no so i get that too and then also hearing somebody say like oh you you have sickle cell or you know it's just scary and then and you were young too like yeah. you were young right you're definitely yeah. not the same person you were now so like all those little things like i understand why you would have said that yeah but you do sound like you're regretful and you regret doing that like Thank you do for you yeah no it, it generally does sound like you because you could have came on here like oh, I said this, like, get over it, like, you know, but you're here very yeah. mature, and it shows, like, you're growing from your mistakes. Mm -hmm. You think, like, if, let, let me ask this, right? What's, like, one advice you could give somebody that's, they don't know, they're stuck in a position, and their only way out is to lie? What's your advice to them? My advice, and what I have learned, and what I will always take from this, is just, it's better not to lie, because once you lie, then you have to keep lying to cover up that lie, and it's just going to lead, Continue. and it's going to continue, and it's going mm -hmm. to lead to a lot of problems, and it's just, I have literally learned just not to lie, and even if it hurts somebody else's feelings, I just have learned not to lie, like, I, and I think now, like, all of my friends and people that I have in my life can say that I am a very blunt and honest person because I think that situation has made me this way. Sometimes it can hurt some people's feelings, but I'd rather just be open and honest about how I'm feeling to avoid conflict in the future. Yeah, because yeah. it, it does bite you in, in the ass in the Yeah, future. it does. Yeah. yeah, so. And I mean, it, it's good you came on here too and you were like, I did my breasts and I did chin lipo. Like, yeah. It goes to show like you are open with it, but it was just back then and in that time you were just genuinely scared. Yeah, but, I mean, if you think about it, like BBLs are so trendy now. It is. They, it's a trend now. It's so like big. It's so mainstream and like whatever. And like if you, if you, if your favorite influencer in 2018 would have came out with the BBL, the internet would have just ate that up. Oh, 100%. And destroyed that. And so anyways. Um, you said a little bit like I, you know, back then you didn't really have like support like that or like you wish you had somebody to tell you like oh don't post that video or anything oh like so that. when when we were in miami and i was telling bram t like at the time i like i said i had just moved to la mm -hmm. i was making all this money and i was living with my ex and um my mom was also there but my mom one she doesn't know english so everything okay. i post on social media she doesn't actually know what i'm posting okay if i would have posted that and said it in spanish she would have been like why are you uploading that like you don't have that and she would have held me accountable okay do you wish it was different though like you I, had somebody to tell I you i wish at the time it's because like i moved there so i i was in i was by myself in la and i only had him so if i feel like and i also wasn't close to my sisters to anybody older than me i wish i had like a mentors somebody or something to tell me like hey like you shouldn't do this do that but since i became independent at such a young age and i was 
the dictator of what, when, yes, no, blah, blah, blah. Like, mm -hmm. I just, I didn't have anybody to tell me from wrong and, and, and good or whatever. And I do wish at the time I had somebody to tell me, like, hey, this is wrong and you shouldn't do that and you're lying on the internet. And But yet again, like I said, I mean, it has made me who I am today. Yeah. So I can only hold myself accountable. Okay. And I can just own up to my mistakes. Okay. Yeah. Well, that, I mean, it takes a lot because usually people will just, you. you know, sweep it under the rug and, you know, but you're actually talking about it and that takes a lot. Yeah, I will say... I'm very glad, like I said, it's at this point in my life because I feel like something that did help me out a lot is moving back to Texas. Okay, yeah, you you recently moved, what, like a year ago, two years ago to Texas? It's about to be, it made three years in March. <gasps> three three years? years already because COVID feel? was in 2020. I moved during COVID. How do you feel being in Texas? Do you think that being in Texas has helped you become more wiser yes. and mature since you're around yes. like, you For know? sure. So I guess we'll touch up touch on a little bit about this but uh i i had initially i moved to texas because i mentally just wasn't okay i had uploaded a video saying that i wasn't okay and i mentally just was not happy okay um i had everything i could ask for you know i had i was very financially stable in la you know my career was going well and everything but i felt like i was missing something and i didn't know what it was and then it got to a point where like my mental health was like the worst of the worst of the worst and it got to a point where it started to affect the people around me and you know it it i didn't realize how bad it was until everybody kind of sat me down there like you have to do something about it because it's mm -hmm. gotten out of control and i was like you know what i think it's time for me to move back to texas Okay. So then I decided to pick everything up and move back to Texas. And it was so hard because... What was hard, though, about it? Because, you know, like, I graduated high school and I just got thrown into L.A. And I got a, I got exposed to a lot okay. at a young Especially, age. Especially, so, yeah, being at a young so age. So all I knew was, like, that. And I did... I basically... I transitioned from my teens to my 20s in L.A. When I started... When I moved back to Texas, I realized that all my friends were there. Okay. So I came back and I'm very blessed that I still had like the same friends from high school that I've been knowing for like 10 plus years. So I still had friends there, but, um, I moved back to Texas and oh my gosh, I was so happy because I rerouted myself and I realized that like, I would have much rather wanted to be at like a party in LA than be at like my cousin's graduation. And I, that's when I realized that my priorities were wrong. Uh -huh. So once I moved back to Texas and I started to regroup and reroute and really, really like work on my issues and my wounds, now I could care less about wow. what is going on in LA. I would much rather be. And I feel like now even like the people that have been with me for years can see that my priorities are completely different and now that's good family is first that's and, really good and that i think something that you do realize as you get older is that like memories with your loved ones is what matters the most especially because you never know when it's their last day yep and um so yeah i feel like texas definitely helped me be the version that i am today and mm -hmm. I'm, that's why i'm also glad that i was able to just yeah come on here so freely talk i'm just so at peace now, no that's honestly. good i yeah. noticed um that you you're really good at making hard decisions mm -hmm. like usually if you weren't like the way you were you would have been stuck sucked into that yeah. la life life like the partying the drugs mm -hmm. like all that and you would have been lost yeah and god forbid I was so lost yeah you know even mm -hmm. more lost and in, in something yeah. deeper and that's what i'm saying like it takes a lot for you especially at a young age with no kids no husband yeah you're making your own money you're very free you ha like you love your freedom you could have just been like eh, whatever i'm gonna stay here like fuck my mental health or whatever but you decided to leave all that behind yeah. and go to texas yeah i i was like that for years i feel like i i think because i have no responsibilities as mm -hmm. in like kids or like a partner i think that's why i was just so like i don't really give a fuck about anything but like me mm -hmm. um yeah it's just I think when, when you have no responsibilities like that, it can be very dangerous because oh, 100%. you just don't give a fuck about anyone or anything besides yourself. And at the time, all I wanted was like distractions and LA is the perfect distraction, Yeah, but it is like the devil's pr playground and like, it got very scary, but I'm glad that I am where I am now. And I was going to move back to LA and I'm like, bitch, what the fuck was I doing? What was I? Wait, when were you going to move back? <laughs> this year. I, Why? Girl, because I was like in tech. Honestly, there's nothing to do in Texas. Yeah. Okay. I've been there because I was like, I really want to go back to Texas. And like now after the two years and this being third year, I'm like, there's nothing to do in Texas. It's okay. flat there. There's no yeah. mountains. 
and you're like the flat earth <laughs> that, no, yeah, I'm thinking, like, the flat earth. In your head. um so i was like i think it's time i move back to do LA. you think like being in texas with your like little mental retreat like do you think if you're back in la you won't get sucked into that again like you think you're good to go that's what so i had made a video of me being like oh i'm moving back to la and, I, and literally all of my supporters were like you dumbass bitch why are you blah, blah, blah. they will yell at me they will hold me accountable Aww. and yell at me because they love you they love me and i feel like my fan base has grown up with me okay so we're kind of like the same age but girl tell me why i started to apartment hunt <laughs> are you serious and then that's when i was like so i went is it up in the air no or no, you, no 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 wait wait, wait. so you i signed the lease no 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 wait oh, your packs are already <laughs> on the way no <laughs> i went to go look at an apartment seven thousand dollars a month for two bedrooms Damn. and i was like I walked into the apartment. I'm like, Daisy, this is the size of your living room. Like, why are you going to go from your nice big house yeah. in Texas to this small little? And I was like, yeah, fuck that. I'm no. like, no, I'm not moving I mean, back. like a trip here every once in a while. Yeah. So then know? then I realized I'm like, wait, I can. I'm, I'm here every weekend. So I literally like I. And it's so a now, really short flight. It's a short flight. It's three yeah. hours. And I'm like, Daisy, you can go in and out whenever. And now I love it. I love that I, I have the balance of, you know, I come here. I, I have my work to do and I can see my friends and I go back and then I see my family. So it's a good balance. I, it's a great balance and I love it now. Yeah. But now I think I'm moving to Miami. <gasps> Miami. <laughs> Damn. No, are I've, you for real? I honestly, genuinely. Yes. I thought about it really, really. Cause I was like, okay, I did LA. Everyone's moving to Miami nowadays. A lot, a lot of my friends from LA moved to Miami. But, um, one thing that I did say, I'm like, if I move out of Texas, you mm -hmm. know, I would for sure move out with someone and that I've thought about moving out with my sister Daphne. Okay. Because I just feel like I need some, somebody. I've learned that I have to be around people. Do you think I, that's good though or bad? I have to be balanced. Like I wouldn't want to move in with my sister but her have her own and I have mine. Okay. But I think what I've learned is that like I've always wanted to be like, oh, I don't need anybody and I'm so independent. But in reality, like, it sucked okay. being alone, like, waking up and, like, not talking to anyone and going to sleep and not talking to anyone. Like, that's honestly pretty fucking sad. I don't know why I put myself through that for so many years. Like, <laughs> me trying, me thinking that was a flex. You need no. a dog or a cat or a man. Uh, <laughs> either one of those. Like, or yeah. a kid. I'm like, okay. I'm like, I don't know. None oh, of the damn. above. Well, no. well, if you do go to Miami, we'll be close. It's yeah, like a 45 minute I know. flight. Um, it's up in the air. Okay. Maybe next year. Right now, I'm still comfortable in Texas, but I, I'm i going to be 26 this year. I'm still young. And, you know, I think I've dated in LA. Mm -hmm. I've dated. Oh, actually, I, have, I haven't dated in Texas. <laughs> you're just like marking off like everywhere all around the world like, like puerto rico here. la i here. did date in, in puerto rico uh-huh yeah um new texas? york and dated texas? dated i mean like i've gone out on dates okay but i haven't gone out on a date in texas no mm -mm. okay i just haven't found anyone that piques my interest in texas but um yeah, maybe Miami will be my next. The one, the it, where you find maybe, your man. Because there's a lot of like Cubans there. Are you ready to like? Are you ready to get like tied down or not yet? No, I am. Oh, you I, are. Uh, yeah, I am. Like proposal, wedding, like Dude, marriage. Honestly, all that? you know, like I now I'm at a point in my life where like I'm so happy with everything that I am ready to like. I don't go out as much. When I do go out, I go out if it's a celebration or you know if it's like you coming into town cool yeah but you will never find me at a club just randomly just because okay. it's a friday night you're like past that i'm so past that um yeah so i'm i'm gonna see i'm i'm at a point where i'm like either put a ring on it or leave me the fuck alone because oh damn and then after that kids or too soon too or you don't want kids i think it's too soon i don't but you have, do want kids i don't want to have kids until i'm like 30 okay yeah i just right now i just don't see myself no, good for you yeah waking up and like waking up for somebody else yeah. yeah i'm still a little bit selfish no 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 take it from me from somebody that had kids at a young age <laughs> like yeah. there's a pros and cons and there's always a battle online about this like oh i had my kids early like i can relax in my 30s and 40s or i can party in my 20s but then i gotta have you know so it's like yeah, a mixed there's thing just a, th there's no winning i feel like everybody has their different opinions on it and everybody has their own pace yeah and their own pace it's yeah. just like whatever works for you you know god has yeah. a plan for you yeah, plus and I want to get my green card citizenship before I even have kids. Okay, so, that's good. Yeah, so I'm gonna wait on that first. Okay, I want to travel the world and then I'll have kids. Do that. Do yeah. that. Period. But I do wanna, I guess, just end this with some trivia questions. <gasps> trivia questions. <laughs> <laughs> there are gonna be three rapid questions before we wrap up. Like, this is it episode? where they have like multiple multiple choice answers? No. Oh, is it about like the flat Earth? <laughs> 
<laughs> what are these questions about? It's gonna be two rapid questions. You say one or the other, and then the last one is a fuck Mary Kill. Okay. Oh my goodness. How do I say fuck to somebody when I'm married? <laughs> they're they're like um celebrities. Oh, okay, okay, that's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That should be good. So first one, natural or beat face? Natural. Doggy or missionary? Lord Jesus. <laughs> Talk your missionary. What if my kids see four, this in the future? Three, two. <laughs> Going to church. Okay. <laughs> Fuck, Mary, kill, Bad Bunny, Peso Pluma, or Maluma. <laughs> Run on Bad Bunny stage. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. Kill oh. Bad Bunny. Okay. I knew you were going to say that. Mary, kill, yeah. or Peso Pluma, or Maluma? Um, Maluma, Mary, and then Peso Pluma. Hook up with? Yeah. Okay, period. Hug up with. Give him a, a kiss on the cheek. Oh, okay. Because okay. I'm a loyal woman. Period, period, period. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much <laughs> for being... I'm over here so scared. You were like sweating. You're like, I really oh was. My you really switched sweating. to like, that side. Don't cancel me. You're like... <laughs> Damn, that was a spicy little trivia. I wanted to do like a little rapid trivia. That no, was good though. Like, no, oh I really God, did no. turn my body. I, was, I like, know you got, away super from you. <laughs> you got super uncomfortable, but okay. you answered that perfectly. Oh, thank I, you. I wanted to just spice things She was testing me low-key for everybody to know that I'm a loyal woman. Yeah. And she is, so. Yeah. I just want to say thank you for coming on here. (laughs) Thank you for having me and for spilling the tea to me and letting me get insight on everything and Mm -hmm. asking you juicy questions. And And you guys can follow Bram T on all her socials. I will have them down below. Thank you. And if you guys want to see what we end up doing for the rest of the L.A. trip, go go check, go follow up on our socials. Yeah, it's going to be good. And episodes every Thursday. Thank you guys so much for watching. Mm -hmm. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.